the CGIAR and National Plant Breeding Programs. Previously, he was the head of the Erie of Erie Plant Breeding, uh, Vice President of Research within the Lima Grain Organization, and also the head of Vegetable Research with Syngenta. And his management career was built on top of a highly successful commercial plant breeder career. And uh, through his role in excellence in breeding, he'll be speaking to us today. So I'd like to thank George very much um, and let him begin his seminar. Okay, thank you. Okay, could, you can hear me well? Yes, you sound very clear. Okay, so thank you everybody for showing up. I'm, I'm currently sitting in a hotel room in India um, working with uh, the uh, ICAR group uh, in Delhi. So this is an extension of, of some of the activities where we're working with the different breeding programs within the CG, as well as a, a handful of uh, national programs as well. So my, my plan for today, I, I, I have a very simple uh, uh, slide set for you. It's only 18 slides. Um, part of the, the first part of the presentation, we're going to talk about, you know, what happened, um, some of the, the step changes that occurred during the EIB annual meeting that occurred on November 5th and the 7th in Amsterdam. And then after that, I'm going to roll into specific specifically some of the things that we're introducing to the group um, with some pretty good acceptance um, uh, regarding product design and product management. So bear with me. I'll start off with the, um, the, the uh, annual meeting update um, first. Okay. Okay. Let me just see here. Let me advance this. Okay. Okay. There it is. Okay, um, so one of the things um, to start off with, we were able to bring in Marco Ferroni from the uh, CGIAR. Um, Marco kicked off the meeting and he kicked it off well. Um, one of the things that he discussed was um, EIB in the context of uh, the potential changes in the one CGIAR and, and the anchor of using uh, EIB um, um, to help with the modernization program, both within the national part, within the CG system, and within the national partners, that was followed by Michael um, Michael Quinn um, uh, sharing the the high level vision of of EIB, um, and uh, that information uh, regarding Michael and all of the smaller or all of the uh, presentations. Um, that occurred during the meeting could be found on the EIB website um, and on the, on the, on the uh, title slide or on the um, slide of the presentation. That's where I put the, put the, uh, the, 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 the link to the, the different presentations. So, the, the, so Marco let, out, let off the meeting followed by uh, Michael Quinn. And then at that point, uh, Martin Croft gave his endorsement of, of the EIB across all of the, the CG DGRs. Um, one of the things that were discussed, alluded to during the meeting, but didn't get uh, anchored until the November 13 meeting was this, this um, move towards the one CGIR. And there were five recommendations coming, coming out of that November 13 meeting. I thought I'd include them here, though they weren't discussed. It, it's in line with many of the things that happened during the meeting. So recommendation was a single mission, unified governments, a uh, institutional integra uh, integration, a new research modality, and more uh, and pooled funding. Okay, so uh, the second slide represents what the context of the meeting was about. Um, so this is a meeting that um, in the last two uh, annual meetings that occurred with EIB, they were more research focused, more of getting into each one of the different modules. And, and the five modules of EIB represents the design and management of products, uh, program optimization, uh, module three is low cost genotyping. Four is phenotyping um, uh, tools and services. 
and module five is bioinformatics, bi biometry, and data management. So in the last, uh, in, in the subsequent EIB meetings, it was more bringing in a larger group of, um, of uh, people that were more intimately associated with the, 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 the modules, specific modules. This year, we wanted to speak to the, the, um, the groups of managers. So we had DGs there, DVGRs, we had breeding project leads, and then we had influencers invited. And so the, 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 the focus was a little different. The focus was to clearly land the, the ability for them to, to clearly explain what EIB was about and for them to sign up as potential influencers and drivers of EIB. So we had four areas that we needed to land. We wanted to put together a, an, a, a purpose or develop a purpose um, that was clear about the vision uh, that we were asked to achieve from the, the donors. We looked at objectives that, were, that are to establish a CGI-wide ownership of the EIB process. Um, and to, to determine the roles of each one of the leaders in the EIB process. The outcomes we wanted for us to recognize that modernization is an alignment, is, is underway, aligned and committed to a shared distinct, um, distinction and accept accountability. And to drive home one of the catchphrases that, you know, breeding program modernization is not a spectator sport, it, it's involving a management to the breeders and even going into the operational components of the breeding programs. And we hope by the end of the meeting, the goal for each um, of the participants would to, to be able to clearly articulate and share what the next steps to make this change a reality. So the focus shifted. The focus shifted from um, a more technical discussions within the models to going to, among the modules to going towards uh, developing connection and um, uh, building responsibility among the leadership group. So we had different components there. So we tried to bring in um, every key component of the modernization program. So we had a funder's feedback um, and during that funder's feedback, the group that was there was able to ask questions of the funders in relationship to what they saw the future vision of not only AIB was, but the crops to end hunger. And during that point, they discussed the, the crop by regional preferences or, or prioritization. They referred to EIB as being one of the areas that will help guide them into the future funding of the of, of money funneled in through the crops to end hunger. They, they discussed the need and the challenge for uh, the uh, CG system to become more efficient, to be more spot on with their targets, um, and to begin to consolidate whenever possible um, uh, that to, to, to really become a more efficient organization. So it was really clear when people were asking about the relationship the, of EIB to the funders and then the funders to the crops to end hunger. Um, and that lasted about 45 minutes worth of discussions there. And you can see the people that participated within the funders organization. We also included a, a number of key program, uh, uh, national program feedback and leadership. So there was a handful of breeders or a handful of national programs represented in, in Africa. Um, we weren't able to get the uh, ICAR from India there, uh, primarily because of visa issues. But we also, during breakout sessions, began to formulate how we can best serve the national programs, what is the format in which to best serve the national programs, um, and what the national programs expected from the um, from the CG breeders and to the programs. So. They were involved and, and they continued to be part of the extension of EIB and the modernization program, but there was also developing a linkage and clarity among the relationship between the CG breeding programs and the national programs that were involved in the, in the, in the meeting. 
We also invited a number of heavyweights coming out of the private sector. We had people coming from Cortiva, Syngenta, Bayer, uh, KWS. And in many ways, uh, what they were used as was examples of changes that occurred within their organization. Um, their, their, some of the processes that were used um, to help drive uh, a, an efficient organization. And, but in general, we're integrated with among all the CG leaders, all, this, uh, all the national program leaders. And there they were looking at developing a perspective from the national, um, from, the, from the private sector on what needs to be, um, or what, how they handle change. In addition to that, you see a much more integration of some of the product from the private sector commercial companies into supporting some of the initiatives of EIB. And that continues to grow um, as more and more people are beginning to lend um, expertise into the modernization program and supporting each one of the individual programs um, or each one of the individual centers, as well as the center by national program combinations. So it was really nice to see um, and, and have the participation of the, of the private sector program. Later on, um, you'll see that I did a role play uh, when we introduced the advancement process. In many cases, I selected um, people coming out of the, the national pro or coming out of the private sector to um, model an advancement process since they're so close to what an advancement process looks like. We also, we also brought a consultant in to talk about change, what has to happen with and change, the ability to connect and um, to drive change within different organizations. Um, and that was really worthwhile, especially in this period of change. So what we really tried to do was talk about change. What we found out at the end of the meeting when people did checkouts was the fact that they got it. You know, people said, you know, we, we're, we're not needing to be convinced about change. We're just in the, op, in the, in the implementation phase. So it was, it was nice that we, we confronted them or provided a support in understanding what needs to be done with change management. But in, in fact, what we found out at the end was people were better, were, were more, more on board than we thought. I don't know if that's true. I think in many cases, um, we can still see more action. Like I said, modern breeding program modernization is not a spectator sport, but, but at least when people were leaving the meeting, there was a feeling that um, you don't have to convince us anymore. It's up to us to implement what's going on. So one of the big changes that we saw, was, so this is going across the different centers. Um, so this is going across the different centers on how we could become more efficient across the centers. And, and we had a number of breakout sessions, but we introduced um, four areas um, that, that had some legs in, in, in really, in really spanning across um, the cross center activities. So one of some things that Enghua is already up and running on in module three was the genotyping services, low cost genotyping. And that's been the model of what we've been doing. The second um, the, the, uh, of a cross center activity. The second one we talked about is digitiz digitization of the support network. Um, the third was the product management network and the biometric support units. And these were all things that were launched based upon crops to end hunger meeting, or crops to end hunger budget, that when, when, EIB, when EIB looked at the improvement plans coming from the different centers, there was a number of common activities that what we said was we'll support that not only on a center level, but we're gonna support that 
as developing a, a support unit within EIB so it can spread across the rest of the, the centers. There's one in particular that, that comes under module one, product design and management, and that's the implementation of a product management network. So let me tell you a little bit about that. So what we did was when we saw the improvement plans coming in, um, we, we began to recognize that there was, a, there was a step change in the way we're thinking. Um, because of our focus was, was beginning to look at products um, and or elite germplasm, we began to recognize that one of the deficiencies that we had was having a product-oriented manager within the programs. So we had social economics people, and the social economics people understand the marketplace, but they, we were really lacking a product-oriented manager that would take the information from the market, the social economics people, the gender people, the seed systems people, creating them into product profiles, which would then be the blueprint for breeders to follow. Vice versa, they will also be responsible for taking the products that come out of the breeding program, the advancement meetings that we'll talk about a little bit later, and then turn that down and then get those products into the marketplace. Now, they're also going to be recognizing gaps, significant gaps of what's preventing us to have greater impact. And so this product manager is a really a big step change. So what EIB through the, well, what the Crops to Anna Hunger did is we supported the hiring of four product managers for two years for four centers, Erie, SIOT, SIP, and IITA, all located in Africa. Three of those four um, centers are also going to be developing or, or hiring an additional product manager. Um, Erie's got one plan for Southern uh, Asia. Uh, SEAT's got one plan for uh, the Americas. And IITA um, are going to hire a clonal product manager, but they're also uh, from the, the centers to uh, the crops to end on your budget, but then also look at hiring um, the non clonal group within IITA. So what we did was we counted by the end of 2020, there may be close to um, uh, 18 full-time and part-time people who manage products um, and manage uh, information coming out of the marketplace. So one of the things that we're trying to do as, a, uh, as an EIB um, support of the, of the centers and, and also of the, of the national programs, is that we're going to be providing a common backbone for the, the product, pro, product managers to develop. So we'll have a consultants coming out of industry and we plan to have a number of key meetings so that as a, as a, as, um, a CG center, we're going to try to implement common ways of best practices. And those best practice would be called would be would be considered market segmentation, the right way to create product profiles, um, advancement meetings using stage gates, and using metrics to measure breeding program progress, but also to measure the 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 output of products into the marketplace. So it's a real significant shift. In the, in the fact that we've become, over the last two years, much more product focused. And this is a really important component for making that product focus initiative. So I, I'm gonna quickly go through the changes in action that we're implementing from the module, module one level. And this is, a, again, another step change that, that nobody is quite doing. So we're, we're looking at the implementation of an advancement process, an advancement meeting. Um, uh, and this shows the components and, and the participants of the advancement meeting. So originally, when, I, when we launched this idea, um, and this is an idea that's commonly done within the commercial world, we expected not maybe lukewarm initiatives, but I was just at Icrasat last week, and um, the IITA people um, 
with the next gen cassava. Uh, Erie is planning their first advancement meetings. But there's been a recognition that these are valuable. And, and people didn't have to be as much convinced on how they how valuable they were. So one of the things that EIB has to has to put together is to provide a guidelines in which these could be rolled out and implemented. And over time they get better. Um, and and I'll explain a little bit more about the the um, the uh, the purpose of this meeting in in the next slides. But th there's three components that we want to do with the the um, advancement meeting components. First, we want to develop a a, um, a a component within the advancement process. And these are not necessarily three components into one meeting. These could be three separate meetings. Um, one is the advancement of products in elite journalism into the into the market. The second advancement is the advancement of traits and owners um, with these traits into the breeding programs. And that's um, and that one is being spearheaded by Damien um, Platten from Erie. And the other one was we're looking at product breeding program uh, assessments. So these three components will do will drive two things. They'll drive the rate of variety replacement and the third one will drive the rate of genetic gain. So annually, we're beginning to set up these processes in place to look at how we manage products, traits, and how we measure genetic gain within each one of the programs. So we, we look at these core teams as management, which is the head of breeding or the DDGR to kick it off. And it doesn't mean that I'm saying that the DGR is, cook, is, is there, but what we want to see is them model the value of this meeting. The second thing we talk about, and we introduced this concept of, of manufacturing within the plant, within the, the breeding programs. And there we were looking at a design or targeting component led by a product manager or a leader of the cross-functional design team. The engineers, which would be the breeding and trait leads. Manufacturing, we're trying production. And that's really valuable because one of the components of the triangle you were cut off so briefly. Okay. So you were the, the design, the engineer part. Okay, okay. So you're gonna see in the next slide a triangle that we tried to, to try to break down the, the delivery of products. And what we said, we equated it to no, uh, not much different than any other manufacturing operation. What we do in plant breeding is not special. It's following just a different way of working. So we're trying to implement the different components and we're trying to provide and identify roles within each one of the components. So we have a design component, which is product management or the leader of the cross-functional design team, because we're trying to get breeders out of the idea of doing everything. We're trying to push together push role specialization. We look at the breeder and the lead and the tech and traits lead as engineers. So once they understand what the blueprint is of the product profile, then they go into their strength in designing a breeding program strategy and also to develop metrics. But one of the components that we see missing, and it's been underweighted in, in the, our performance is looking at the manufacturing, the component of it. So, so operational, uh, operational leadership. And we do include this in the advancement meeting. And the goal of the manufacturing is to produce a product uh, as, as good as possible, as quickly as possible, and as cheaply as possible possible. And there's some really great organizations doing a lot of things. I just was at ICRASAT where they're, they've taken the Erie model and they've taken it to a new level where they're beginning to, to um, have a, a sharing of equipment. They have now uh, a single force of, um, of um, 
data collectors and of operational people take care and taking care of all the breeding programs. And so they're really gaining a lot of, ex, a, a lot of expertise in that area. And uh, the whole idea there is if we can save money in the expensive area of operations, we can take that money and move it into, um, into the design component or into the engineering component of this core group. The other potential participants of the meeting are the product design teams, such as gender specialists, social economics, the technical design team, the national program beaters, the phenotypers, and the biometricians. And then what we're trying to do through some of the uh, standard costing and some of the leads being taken on CIMIT maze, they just had trainings on standard costing of uh, uh, standardizing us so that we can get a better handle on the, our, our costs. They're included, the financial people are included within the, um, uh, 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 the core team to get at that. And then the communication experts to see, um, to communicate what comes out of there, both on the advancement, as well as uh, developing a story in which exemplifies the efficiencies and the changes which which is occurring within the CG. And so like I said, I didn't I expected a lot of pushback. And actually right now there's a number of centers and a number of products or a number of crop oriented group groups that are way ahead of me now. So I've, now I've got to quickly put together a guidelines um, and formalize that by the end of this year. So one of the things that we also talked about is the inf is the introduction of the RACI system. So this is particularly important, um, or this is particularly an important component conveyed by KWS. Um, and uh, Leon Brewers, who was the head of KWS, was also a former CIMIT breeder. And his argument was that if there is one organization that needs RACI, it is the CG system because in many cases, when we launch a project, we're not clear about who's responsible for implementing the project. So this is a RACI that one would put together for the implementation of the annual meeting. And in this annual meeting, the product manager or the design team lead is the one who runs the meeting. The person who's accountable and providing resources for this to be successful would be the head of breeding or the DGR. And then you'll notice the people that are consulted in the meeting, the consulted for the advancement process are the people that are designated with the C, going from the breeders to the trade, the operational people. And you'll notice that the shift is trying to bring breeders into a team orientation. And in doing so, they're not necessarily running the product advancement process anymore. So there's going to be a level of transparency and level of, of, um, of approval or validation of the nominations of the breeders. And again, when we had that discussion, I expected more of a pushback. Um, but but in, the, in the conversations, breeders somewhat accepted the idea that they don't want to be part of the design process, but they want to be part of the nomination of the germplasm that's going to go into the advanced community. And then at the end of the day, the, the, the people that need to be informed of this process is the director generals and the funders. So let me move on a little bit. So this is the triangle I was talking to you about. And this is something that we featured as a new way of working within the breeding group. We talked about targeting being design and targeting is what the product manager will do, which is designing a better product that will establish, that's gonna be established in the blueprint that's called the, the product profile. And they're also gonna run the, the advancement meeting. And the advancement meeting is how, is where you, um, um, is, is the extent of how much product is, is um, managed through the process or advanced through the process. So today we had a really lively um, discussion with the ICAR group. The, we talked to, to the, the Basmati Rice Breeding Program, and they were just proud of the varieties that they just released, and it went 
within two years, this new bas bas basmati variety went from hardly any acreage to to a half a million hectares. And we had the discussion. I said, okay, so then you don't need to release anything in that space. And they said, no, 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 we need to keep going. And I said, you know, that's, the, that's what we're trying to break. When you have an advancement process, an advancement that, of, a, of a variety that, that's all of a sudden taken off, the last thing you want to do is to compete against that variety that's out in the marketplace. And for about 15 minutes, we had this discussion because there, the breeders within, at least in the IC, ICAR system is, no, we're played to release breeders. So they were like a machine. You know, they, they created a variety, they released it. Now we have to replace it the next year. And I said, no, that's not the way you do it. And part of the advancement process will be that management of the product. But that's something that's yet not accepted very well. And I think in some of the ways they incentivize to actually to release products, which in the, what we've seen best practices is less is more, more is less. So the more products you, you um, release, you begin to cannibalize the products you just released. So that's a big step change for the breeders. We talked about the engineering so that once they get the blueprint called the, 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 the product profile, the, the breeders now need to figure out how to design a breeding program that will have a continuous improvement of the populations and, and, and how they can do it as effectively as possible. And then, like I said, the execution group, which is the manufacturing group, pr produces products quality products as, as, as early as possible or as quick as possible at the lowest possible price. So we, we introduced the idea of looking at where the breeders do today. And the breeders span everything from market knowledge to technical knowledge. And in this particular case, we began to look at this and say, you know, when I was in school, we didn't learn how to design a product, but once you get a PhD, all of a sudden you become a good person, a person knowledgeable of the customer. And what we're finding is that the breeder needs to look at the different roles within their team, and they need to divide up the, the, the components of the, of the delivery process. So if you look at market knowledge, we be, we're beginning to fill that slot with with product managers. So that allows the breeders to specialize in the sweet spot in which they've been trained. On the, norm, on the, on the right hand side, you're gonna see technical knowledge. That technical knowledge is being filled by the biometricians and the quantitative geneticists being hired that's being requested by the breeding programs. So we need to begin to, and this is something that we did commercially, we need to be breeding as a team as opposed to an individual breeder being the king or the queen. It's going to take a while for us to begin to implement that, but there's a challenge that we put forward saying, you know what, this is something for the management of risk of a, of a talent loss or just in order to keep experts within the system. This is a, a, a different way of, of, of working and, and migrating to that. So when we looked at that system, you can begin to see that this gives opportunities for the integration of the national breeding programs as well. We just have to be clever to begin to look at how we want to have role specialization within the breeding process. So I'm going to quickly go through the last few slides here. Um, and uh, I, I, I how we're meeting the challenge with the advancement meeting. So I've already told you that we're, one advancement meeting is going to be on products and elite germplasm. The other one is going to be on traits and donors that's led by Damien and then breeding program assessment. So the best way we thought of doing this was creating a role play. So we created um, scenarios or mythical product profiles. We, we took advantage of some of the work we're doing with an abacus bio group that's taking product profiles from an opinion-based product profile to a data-driven product profile. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second or two. But one of, the, one of the roles that we did was we took breeders and leaders 
through a system that what an advancement meeting would look like. We had three, we, we looked at this as a play with three acts with multiple scenes, but really we were only able to get through one act, which was the products in the elite germplasm. So with that, we had a product manager that was playing a person playing the role of product manager. <clears throat> so what we're trying to do, because we are, we don't have money to do everything. And the donors are saying, well, you can't do everything. In fact, we're not going to give you money to do everything. We began to look at the different speed, the different market segments, and the TPEs um, uh, of, of, of different market segments. And we, instead of looking at this from a commercial perspective of where the most sales are or what the highest margins are, like a commercial company would look at it, we, would, we, were, we began to work with IFRI and some of the local social economics people, and we began to populate this based upon impact from a – a uplifting standpoint. So these are some of the things that are working with IFRI of the data that's out there. Now, I created this thing. I created this thing called kumquats, um, a couple kumquat market segmentation, but the data in here is populated based upon real data for different crops. And so uh, the, the reason I chose kumquats is because if I chose rice, everybody in the audience would have an opinion about rice, and I'd be finding myself answering questions that uh, from the rice community that made uh, that made complete sense, but it lost the point of of the the um, the uh, the the um, role play. So we chose something that nobody knew anything about, and we are successful. That there's very few people out there that actually know anything about kumquats. But the focus of this from the product management perspective is we could then begin to look at the different components of the product profiles um, or, or of the market segments. And, and one of the things that we're going to ask product managers to do in conjunction with the leadership of the centers is begin to say, these are the areas that we're going to work on and these are the areas that we're not going to work on. So we did a recent market segmentation, oh, about six months ago, and seven of the eight centers participated. Of those seven, of those centers, that what, what they found was the breeding teams uh, are actually have a metrics or, or a matrix in which they have, six, they breed for in the CG 686 crop by country combinations. So many people still are breeding, breeding legacy targets, four legacy targets that I don't know if they make sense anymore. So one of the things that we're gonna do with the product manager is begin to see where targets make sense. And instead of listening to the, to the funders to proactively pitch this to the funders for um, for creating funding capacity. The funders tell me that that's what they're waiting for, but they have to be in alignment with some of the, in the areas in which they are growing or in which they want to focus in on. And they believe that one of the goals was during the funders conversation is they, they started working in projects too much and it's sort of, a ruin the long-term continuation of a breeding program. So what they're promising in this next generation is that funding will be consistent as long as it's lined up with their regional, crop by regional prioritization. And so one of the areas that you have to look at as a crop, as a product manager, is to understand where we'll play well, meaning where we're going to breed and where we're not going to breed. So in this particular case here, the two highest programs were um, the local consumption, rain-fed um, highlands with low input and rain-fed lowlands and rain-fed rain lowlands with low input. So in this mythical compquat market segmentation, one of the responsibilities are of, of the product manager would be to suggest in partnership with the 
with the breeding lead a portfolio of investments so that the breeders can now begin to look at how much investment they're going to put into different market segments. So we're beginning to actualize um, that, that prioritization that the funders are keenly interested in and maybe back out of some of the legacy areas where we are breeding for. At the end of the day, we have to assume, even though that they promise additional funding, they have to assume that if we're funding is stable and stays the same, we need to be more clever with the where and when we spend where we and where we spend the money regarding these market segments. So I've got one more slide here. Okay, this is uh, my colleague um, um, in module two. We'll begin once we look at a product profile of Comquats, and, he, and, and the module two people will be here in ICAR next week, is we've created product profiles with the, with the ICAR groups. And now one of the things is we're going to have to look at a continuously improving population of breeding program where we can begin to look at the different breeding strategies to execute on the product profile or the blueprint that's out there. So this is just a, a GWIS slide where we're looking at the gene frequencies of some of the key traits that are in, in the product profiles relative to the populations in which you're breeding. The last thing I wanted to show before, this will be the last slide. So we're also working with a, a company called Abacus Bio out of England and they also have an office in, in, in Australia. They're working with um, with a thousand minds in a in a certain survey in which you could get at the 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 uh, economic prioritization of um, of various traits broken down by the different segments that they breed for, and so this was an example. I was I'm, we're working with Abacus Bio, and, and there's a project with Abacus Bio with IITA with uh, SIP this year and with Erie all in Africa. So all three of them are beginning to approach this um, and working separately with Abacus Bio, but also gonna be working as a group so we can learn more about this, this economic um, values among the, the, different, the different traits of the product profile. And this is really valuable because once we understand this, we can begin to change the way breeders breed and do more um, uh, selection index breeding than, than by, by what we're doing. So you're breeding for a group of traits rather than for individual traits. So when I was with the Abacus Bile, I said, okay, let's pretend, you know, one of the things that really stump breeders is, is, is um, of a uh, uh, relevant trait, a gender relevant trait. So let's develop some simulations where we can look at gender relevance. So if you look at the last three columns, we divided up these two market segments into the, of the smallholder farmers, um, and then I compared it to the commercial world. And when we did this surveys through Abacus Bio, we began to actually begin to see that that, and then we divided it by gender, we began to see there are certain traits that potentially could be valuable by taking, what, taking a product profile that's opinion-based, that's put together by a cross-functional team that's close to the marketplace, and by using some of the techniques of surveying and then using the, the analysis coming from a thousand minds, we can actually begin to see the value of looking at some of these traits um, and beginning to get an economic assessment of it. And one of the things that we have to do if we really want to be precision in our breeding is to try to, to, try to now to eventually evolve from our opinions to a data-driven um, uh, product profile. And this is an example of what we can do with Abacus Bio. And by the, within 18 months, we'll have a better idea, at least with rice and, and SIP, 
rice, sweet potatoes, and cassava of the different traits where we need to focus in based upon segment in which um, has been clarified through the survey. Okay, with that, I'm done. So it was taking longer than I expected, but I'd be happy to answer any questions that anyone would like to share. This is Kate. Thank you very much, George, for your very informative, uh, excellent presentation. And yes, please, if anybody would like to ask a question, um, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask George. Any questions from anyone? Also, if you're having trouble with your microphone, please feel free to write it into the chat. I would like to ask George a question. This is Marco from Erie. Hi, Marco. Uh, George, uh, given the fact that uh, the people that fund this are, are USAID and the Gates Foundation, both of which are, are big players in the open data movement, um, what do you see uh, excellence in breeding doing in terms of opening data and at what stage? of the process of breeding, do you see that happening? Okay, I, Marco, I'm sorry, that went completely over my head. Ex can you bring that down to a level I understand? What do you mean by open data? Okay, what I mean with open data, at what point do you think that the data that is being gathered by CJR public domain breeding programs becomes public domain? Oh, okay. So I don't know if I'm going to answer your question, but um, the way you would want it to. So right now we're working, we're, we're starting to work with the big data. We're going to have a meeting very shortly within the next two weeks when I get back, where we're going to have a meeting to take all this abacus bio market work and get it into our big data platform. So I, 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 I think that at least from that component, I've been thinking about that, but I haven't been thinking about other things beyond that right now. Thank you. Any other questions from anyone on the, on the webinar? George, this is Jan Backlund. Hey, Jan. Hi. So, uh, from my experience working in a, in a commercial um, setting, I, I have a great respect and, and appreciate the value of, of product profiles. In, in my experience with them, there was a tight integration with the supply chain and marketing as well as uh, the breeding and, and uh, product, that side of the product development. And one of the challenges that I see in the in the CG system and in, in public breeding is that um, the breeding programs aren't integrated with the supply chain in the same way that they are in a in a commercial company and I wonder how um, you know if you if you agree that that is a little bit of a distinction and creates some special challenges and if so um, how you would see trying to address and, and bridge and I guess, uh, achieve tighter integration with um, supply chain and marketing and, and uh... so, so that's a really good question and so I have to tell you when we went out with product profiles within the way we currently thinking within product profiles the, you know in designing the as social economics people, seed systems people. Um, there's the breeders in many cases were not used to giving up that control and not used to taking the time to really try to understand or try to integrate cross-functional team. But one of the things that we pushed forward on, and I think it was because of the, the visits we had with a lot of the centers, when they went into their improvement plan mode, uh, every center except for one um, asked for at least one and and two 
product managers. So they recognize that there is a gap through the integration of this. And the whole idea with the product managers, and really, Jan, this is the first time anybody cared about the product. Know about once you release it, it was gone. Integration of the product management is because one of the leaders within SIP said, You know, I just need. Two years. Be examples that I that I was happy with, you know. So one of the things of working with Hans from Erie is that when we launch a product manager, the product manager, for example, with Erie, with that's going to be for rice in the in Africa, will take care of both Erie and um, uh, Africa rice because they're product oriented. I was just in Af I was just in Ikrasat. And what we did was we combined two product managers um, or, or we got two product managers um, talking within Icrasat and Siat. Both of them are developing forages, tropical forages, and they have one has a way of entry to the market that the other one wasn't even aware of. So if I can now have instead breeders talking, product managers talking, we could actually begin to develop a portfolio on, on tropical forages. To my surprise, both of the leaders within the center thought it was a great idea in the fact that a product manager in India could be handling SIAT products and a product manager in Africa could be handling ICRASAT products, projects, products coming out of in, uh, uh, India. Never in my wildest dream would I thought that that would have been a possibility. But if you begin to look at it on the product level, and you look at that in that particular case as a go-to market strategy working through a South American seed company that happened to be relocated to Kenya, there's some real opportunities if we begin to think along those lines. So you're spot on. I think there's a gap. I think that there's. I, I think that the product manager will go a ways into getting into filling that gap. And if you begin to see what's happening in CIMIT, they're beginning to hire product managers out of the private sector. So they have a different nose for getting, to, for, for what it good would look like. And I think that's going to lead towards uh, the, that better networking that has already been a gap. Sorry, Jan, I went around the house five times, but I was excited about this Ikersat siat deal of on a product basis and if i can get that type of thinking into the system i think it's going to be able to look at this and we're going to be looking at product product go to market strategy and market not being for 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 seed sales but market being the market segment that we want to hit thanks hi i think please go ahead hi. But I see Sean Luke is unmuted, so I cede to him if he's got a a question. No. Okay. Hello, George. Can you hear me? Uh, somebody said something. Okay. Uh, sorry. Am, am I am I on now? Yes. Yeah, I can hear you, Sean Luke. Okay. Great. Uh, thank you so much. I thought I, I, it was really informative and um, well laid out. Um, I was interested in the in the advancement meetings that, that it's not just uh, germplasm advancement, but also trait advancement and and breeding assessment. I really like that. Uh, yeah. And I guess what I'm interested in particularly is the trait advancement. What the what the you imagine the different pace of different traits coming in. So I'm still coming from a perspective of that it takes a while to to improve a, a given trait, and mm -hmm. uh, and so then I'd be nervous about having too many traits come in, uh, you, you know, new traits on a regular basis, old traits being dropped, et cetera. Uh, 
And I, I mean, I see a lot of what you said as being valuable for population improvement. Um, and I don't know exactly where we are at in terms of uh, our discussion about about product uh, population improvement relative to product profiles and and hitting profiles. But the the nervousness about new traits coming in does have to do with uh, my focus, at least on population improvement. <laughs> So. Yeah, that's a really good question. And I'm glad you took that on because today in the ICAR meetings, we had a vigorous discussion about the continuous improvement of the population and how you integrate new traits within that population. So one of the things we're going to do a PAG is to put together the, into the development phase. And what I mean by the development into the elite germplasm, uh, Jean-Luc, will be done in a manner that is in agreement with the breeders accepting it, as well as the criteria of what good would look like. I so, think by, George, if I can make one comment, I think one area of clarification would be, I, I think we're talking about haplotypes when we talk about traits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it would probably good, be good to change that terminology so that people are clear. So we're talking about taking a haplotype that's at very low frequency, but may have a high value mm -hmm. and determining whether we should invest in increasing its, its uh, frequency in elite germplasm. Okay, so when you say trait, you're not talking about something like softness of the boiled cassava root. No, actually, I was thinking along a trait for trait discovery. So if that originates from the design process, and all of a sudden we begin to look at a trait that is needed within the market, not in this product profile, not... So one of the things that I've gained from the conversations that we had within within different visits was the SEAT group has this down. They look at product profiles as being the first five years. And, and then the new traits that need to be brought into the, and beyond this up with the stage gate, the stage gate system will begin to look at the characterization of that trait on a phenotypic level, but also the, the molecular markers that you'll follow that trait and then put that into an elite background. So, so Gary's right in that at, at, there's a component of that, of the breeding program where you're increasing the frequency of the, uh, of, uh, the, the gene frequency within a population. This is more of getting the traits with molecular markers into a usable background. So discovery, and then going into the phase of deployment, and then that deployment will be put into a background where the future parents that could be then integrated within an elite population. Because, you know, John Luke, you, you know as well as I is, when you put less desirable material into a lead population about with, with traits. Gary, Gary is it's true. When you begin to look at the haplotypes and you look at the increase in the frequency of that within a, an elite population, that's not that's not necessarily what I was referring to here. And we can take that offline for further discussion. Thanks. That was good. I appreciate it, George. Thank you. So, so maybe we have time for one. Uh, is there one final question? No. If not, we we have reached the end of the hour. Um, so I would uh, like to thank our speaker very much, and thank everyone for for coming to the seminar. Um, and if anyone has any questions that have have come up um, after this. I, I'm sure that you can send them to, to George as well. So thank you very much again. Okay. Thank you thank all.
Yeah, we will share the slides, also the recording directly on the Gobi webinar, and you will have a judge contact to follow up on more questions. Thank you all. Have a wonderful day now. Bye. 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 See you next week, George. Bye-bye.